what we're song. I was lost in the darkness, living in despair. My heart was full of sin that no one can repair. But then I heard a voice from heaven calling out to me, Leave your sin and come and be free. Through the journey of life.
deeper into that, by letting you know that we are in a warfare oh, yes. for our minds. Yes. Like, so Paul writes to the church at Ephesus and he says that you are supposed to wear the full armor of God because you knew that you were getting attacked. Now I want you to know that there's not a single person in here who is not under attack by the devil. Some of you think that you are spiritual to a certain extent, but the more spiritual you are, the more you are prone to getting attacked. Because there are powerful people called the Lemonade Church, okay. people who are waiting for the second coming of Christ. And the devil knows that he's running out of time and he's coming for each and every one of you yeah. to take you down before his time runs out. He is not sleeping, he is waiting to get what your mind is. That's what you have that the devil doesn't like. That's what we're singing about the influence of Christ Jesus in your mind. Now go with me to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. They say, put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the rules of evil. Okay. Yes. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and have a double to stand. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Have a double to stand. <coughs> Paul says, wear the full armor of God, and have a double to stand. Yes. By stand, you mean that you not allow the devil to take away the territory that God has given you. By stand, you're saying that do not evacuate the place in which God has put you in. By stand, you mean stand against peer pressure, stand against sin, stand against everything that stands against what you know about God. Amen. Can you please continue with the verse? Stand therefore having your loins get about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Verse 15. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation. I am going to emphasize on that helmet of salvation. Because like I said, we're talking about the battle of the mind. It is the helmet that will protect you from the devil getting into your mind. Oh, but that's what you mean that moment, you know? And that is why we're saying the helmet of salvation. Because it is the head that you want to protect. Now, I like to allow me to divert from the seven of the by talking to those who are having what we call a hard experience in their walking. These are people that are governed by emotions. People who make important decisions based on what they feel rather than what they know, rather than facts. Now, go with me to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 4, verse 5 to 7. But unto Cain and to his offering he had no respect, and Cain was very broad, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou broad, and why is thy countenance falling? If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? If thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and shall thou rule over him. We all know the great story of Cain and Abel. Both of them had to offer a certain sacrifice to God. But it was the offering of Abu that was accepted rather than the offering of Cain. And instead of Cain thinking, but what was it about the sacrifice that God did not like? He decided to think why Abu did not do it. He decided to rely on his feelings. He felt jealous. Jealousy turned into envy. And before we knew that, he killed Abu. Now, before he killed Abu, God came to him and he said, Why has your countenance fallen? Did I not tell you that if you do the right thing, I will accept your offering? Why are you taking so much of your hatred against Abu and not considering what it is that I have rejected on your offering? Most of us are like things today, and it's not unfortunate that it doesn't result in us killing other people because we know that we go to jail for it. But most of our jealousy and anger are that which is leading us into sinning and into stealing.
staying away from the glory of God. So now I have to tell you something. The devil is not after your feelings. He's actually in every day is your feelings. Because it's not compassionate. He knows that your feelings are carnal because we live in the flesh. And they are going to live according to the flesh and live the things of God because they are lying on your feelings, not that. Mm. Now let me go back to the end. Shall we pray? To our Father God in heaven, we thank you for your grace, we thank you for your mercy, we thank you for this word that you have given to us. May you please help us, dear Father, to understand that we are in a war for our minds and to be able to understand your word and to live according to it. This I ask and pray in Christ our Lord, the Savior's name. Amen. Right. The rest of the sermon, the verses, second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 25. For the only war in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the warfare for our minds, we have this continue. For the weapons of our warfare are not fleshly, they are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. We are passing down every imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought into the obedience of Christ. Now there are seven things I want you to notice about this verse. It says that we are casting down every imagination and high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Which means that every wicked thing, every happening that the devil is throwing at you is after what you know. The devil is replacing what you know to be an abomination to God, such as a man sleeping with a man, so that you may justify it when you suddenly feel like you like a boy. When you suddenly feel like you like a girl. When you like a girl. I'm not going back to the idea of feelings. Do you see how important it is? He is going against what you know, the fact. He's trying to remove it from your mind and replace it with whatever this world is compromising. That's why we find ourselves compromising, see? That's why we find ourselves into this world. Because our bodies are fleshly, we are willing to listen to anything that makes sin less of a root and more of just something. <laughs> they make the word of God, they make the knowledge of God less important than other things far much more important. Mm. Now take me, uh, let me take you to the other thing that I noticed about this verse, casting down imaginations. The Bible calls the devil's weapon imaginations. <laughs> Louis and Marasha talked about how media was the devil's greatest weapon in the last days. Because he knows that his young people were going to move in the social media and the lies and the peer pressure and whatnot. It is those things that put imaginations in your mind. When you watch a horror movie, you're not imagining ghosts coming after you. So I lose that guy to jump on you and I'll never get to pretend it. Can I own a man that changes your life and opens social media? You're not imagining yourself as rich as them. And before you know it, you're stealing from someone else's trunk. You're stealing from someone else's purse.
You want to read the Bible and then you find that it's probably it's too boring and rather read the novel. Mm -hmm. And now you're feeding your mind to the novels and the fictions and the Bible instead of the word of God. So how do you expect to read in this movie? So let me go to you to Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. He that should let his mind is greater than he that take the city. When we read the second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5, we talked about putting into captivity every thought into the obedience of Christ. And then I already explained to you how the major warfare is of our mind. And so the Bible says that he that taketh control of his mind is greater than he that taketh the city to be the gift of the Lord. But there is a verse that says that he that ruleth his mind is greater than he that taketh the city. Because once you have gained control of your mind under the obedience of Christ, you can now succeed in this war. Now, the Bible says, um, in Romans, that our minds are carnal, they are special. In other words, anything you leave your mind to think about is nothing to do with God, because we are all flesh right now. And that is why I talked about the weapons of the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, and prayer, because our minds are carnal. If we read 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe it not, and if you also read um, Romans 8 verse 7. <coughs> Romans 8 verse 7. Because the kind of mind is in any place, God, so it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. Now I have to say something to you guys. We cannot stop the bed from um, coming to your end. But you can't stop it from listening. Mm. In other words, because we are in kind of body and because our mind only sees an energy against God, we cannot stop bad thoughts coming into your head. And it's rather unfortunate that it's already most of us have dropped in so much into media, into these novels, into all these things. That now, if you're not reading, if you're not in church, you're thinking of something else. That is nothing to do with God, mm. right? And we are saying you defy. You can think of those things, but sin comes in when you are not sheltered, when you are now entertaining those thoughts. And that is what we are coming like this now, because the more you entertain those thoughts, the more you sin, and you will never, ever live your nature. Now, apart from the carnal mind, the devil talks about the doubtful mind, the great man. If you go to um, Luke chapter 12 verse 9, it says that you need the be of doubtful mind. James 1 verse 8 says that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Because you want one foot in the world, you also want another foot in heaven. At the end of the day, you're not going to enjoy this world because you're too busy trying to gamble between God and the world, and then you won't make it to heaven. Your life is going to waste. To people who wish to secure God's world, I would like to give to you Matthew chapter 7 verse 18. Matthew chapter 7. Verse 18. Enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in there at. There can only be one way or the other. There is no in between. I think we should perfectly express that for us. How many of us know the song No Green by Jonathan Michael <laughs> Jonathan Reynolds I said he got to tell me no personal details but we don't know about Jonathan Reynolds Anyways, um, Jonathan Reynolds says that Okay, let me think of the song See, I'm not a fool Eventually I'm gonna have to choose Because I can't keep going to church and keep doing my dirt knowing of how much I'm worth. Of course, I jumbled up the lyrics, but he's talking about how there can only be one way or the other. There is no in between. There is no green. There is either black or white. And if you go to the book of Revelation, I forgot the phrase, but there's a specific church 
that is a good call. And God says to this church, I wish you were at the hospital court. But because you want to be lukewarm, I will spit you out of the mouth. Most of us are going to be spitted out of the mouth because we are too busy trying to juggle either here or there. Because we can speak against the devout mind, which I will speak about right now. But most of us here are not devout because we know God and we know what is expected of us. Most of us are part of the doubtful minds, the look of Christians, the people who act like they love God, but they are just doing it because they fear you. Know? So they just come to church because you know, at least I can get a chance of salvation. But when we're talking about salvation, we mean that you are supposed to be invested in God completely. Your whole heart, your whole soul, everything in you has to be within God. You are supposed to not be of a doubtful mind. If you are for God, stay there. If you are from the other place, but I'm just trying to say that do not be of doubtful minds. And then the Bible also writes about the God man forwards to Titus of the certain people that are unbelievers, that are always liars, that are defiled. Evil thoughts are the suicide of the soul. These people are literally entertaining everything that comes into their minds. For a boy to watch pornography is not just they went to the site and then they chose not to do that one at one. I think you have to do and would have entertained those thoughts for a really long time. For a girl to decide to jump in the corners with another boy, people are going to come out with how nice must it be for me to be healed. The other boy. And so that is what I call the devout mind. People who continuously entertain the thoughts that are against the word of God. And because of our time, I will move on to the renewed mind. Romans 12 verse 12 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. Because Jesus Christ died for me and you and shed his blood, it means that there is a chance of salvation in each one of you. Now I want you to understand something that Tanya made us understand, that even Chantel and Gates made us understand. He can't be no. You cannot overcome sin by yourself. This is a Christian school, and we may have thousands of sermons up there. We may have teachers talking about God and each other for not all reasons. But it is not within you to overcome sin because you're of the flesh. You have to acknowledge your need for Christ. Self to Christ is a whole chapter, the sinner's need for Christ. And it talks about how everything in this world can only create an outward appearance of a pure Christian. Outward appearance. You go to church, you read the Bible, you volunteer to do everything, to preach, to pray, to take worship in power. But it makes no sense if the Holy Spirit is not inside your heart. We talked about a dead conscience before. I think it was in my kid in my room. They talked about a dead conscience. People who cannot lie to their front teeth without anything in their telling they could do what to do with God. And if you used to do that, you would lie in your heart. But now we lie, we move on, we steal, we move on, we do all these things that are against the word of God, we move on without having an inch in us, it means that our conscience is dead. Mm -hmm. And to revive that conscience, you need the Holy Spirit in you. You need to pray, you need to continuously read the Bible, and that is how you get a renewed mind. Most of us feel like we're supposed to find a new down when we have learned how to overcome sin ourselves. But I remember this one time in Form 2 and Mr. Semutri that it is actually worse for you when you feel like the worst sinner where you're supposed to pray. That is when God will come to you. But most of us are trying our best to try and change ourselves, to overcome sin, to say no without having God first. No. Choose God first. Understand that it's a priority in your life. Understand it's important in your heart. And then you can overcome sin. Now, if you go to me to Philippians um, 2 verse 5, it says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. We are to have the mind of Christ. Um, Louis in Ruarashe talked about how we are supposed to think of whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is acceptable, whatsoever is of good report. These are the things we are supposed to think about. And then we finally have the mind that we speak of in Romans 8 verse 6. 
when they say that to be spiritually minded is peace. So it is only God that can transform your mind, that can get you into thinking the way that Jesus Christ was, that can get you to be neither doubtful, neither defiled, but to be of Christ and to stand in Him. Now I conclude in my sermon, what does the church say? Amen! So I would say that those who want to have a renewed mind, please stand, but somebody they were sleeping. So, this is what I'm going to do. We are all going to kneel down. Amen. And you're going to think about everything you've been thinking about. And you're going to talk to God. Amen. I'll give you each five minutes to just speak to God about how you want him to renew your mind. What is repentance? Repentance is a change of mind. Mm. It is the time that you start thinking, good, I want to follow Christ. But most of us have a change of mind today and we have another change of mind tomorrow. We want to be your Christ today. Someone's someone heart is probably beating, but you know I believe in my life wrong and I want to turn to Christ. But tomorrow when peer pressure comes, you're breaking those drugs, you're breaking to sin, you're breaking to life. So I want you to take these five minutes to pray to God, asking Him to renew your mind. Let us be with your breath. Thank you. 
Thank you. 